up my energies welcome back to my channel and as always salute to you your inner god or goddess and your gangster so today i'm doing another review now this review is going to be a little out of the ordinary i'm not reviewing i don't know a job or a product or a food i'm doing a review on narcissist <laughs> first things first we're going to define narcissism what is it because i feel like we live in this culture now where we have a lot of buzzwords, right? Someone throws something out there or someone says a word and it becomes, it just takes off and now everyone's using the word and they don't necessarily know the definition, but it just sounds good because everyone else is using it. That's, I, I find that happens with a lot of things in our society now, like, oh, you're a narcissist, but do you even know what that is? Or did this person do something to you and you feel like, now you feel slighted, so now you, well, they must be a narcissist. Like th that's the only explanation, you know what I mean? We're gonna go through some signs of someone that is a narcissist, that they, things that they may display, behaviors that they may have um, that would kind of indicate or signal that maybe they are narcissistic. Narcissism is a disorder. It's not just, you know, this thing that you, you say that someone is or someone has because they did something to you that you didn't like or because they made you feel a certain way. So I've done my research, nothing extensive, but I, I'm never gonna come on here and tell y'all something that I haven't looked up myself, that I haven't tried to research myself. That's just not me. That's just in general. I don't like when people are like, well, I know this because, okay, back it up. Like, tell me something, show me some statistics, show me something, I don't know. Don't just pull anything off the internet. Yes, the internet is a great tool to, you know, research things and I use the internet too. I'm not saying that I'm, I'm going to the library, like, no. But you have to be able to discern between, okay, this seems like a credible source versus this is just somebody on the internet with an opinion. Cause we all have opinions, right? What, what's the saying? An opinion is like an asshole. We all have them. We all poop. <laughs> Moving on. I had an experience that really opened my eyes to, wow, is this, am I dealing with a narcissist? I've never used that label on someone just loosely. I've never been like, oh, this person's clearly a narcissist. I've never had to do that. But this situation that I was in, a month or two ago really opened my eyes to like yo this is a real condition where people really have this and are really not aware that this is how they're behaving that this is how they're moving and that's not normal that's abnormal based on that experience i was like yo i gotta make a video because this is crazy <laughs> this is and not crazy i don't want i know that's a word that you probably shouldn't use it's not politically correct and but yo the situation was mad mad like the it was First things first, we're going to define narcissism. What is it? So I'm gonna use Wikipedia because that was the quickest definition to pull up. You can do your own research in your own time. I highly suggest that you do your own research, right? Don't take everything that I'm saying for fact, right? That's the beauty of the internet. You can research anything. It's at your disposal, it's at your fingertips, right? Narcissism is the pursuit of gratification from vanity or egotistic admiration of one's idealized self-image and attributes. The term originated from Greek mythology, where a young man named Narcissus, we all know that story, right? Fell in love with his own self-image reflected in a pool of water. Narcissism or pathological self-absorption was first identified as a disorder in 1898 by Havelock Ellis. So that's it, right? It's the pursuit of gratification from your own idealized self-image, right? Or your own vanity or your own egotistical ideals of who you are and what you should be. So now I wanna talk about the signs or signals that you may be dealing with someone that's narcissistic or maybe that you're narcissistic. Let's talk about it. What's interesting is the experience that I had that I'm gonna, you know, obviously tell you guys about while I go through this list is I researched, right? While dealing with this person, I was like, yo, this is not, something's not right. <laughs> and it was, it was always intuitive and I just did not follow through, which is why you should always listen to your gut. Always. Your gut always knows, always. There's never a time where your gut is wrong, never. And so what I had asked, what I typed in Google was like, how, how to know someone's a, a narcissist? How do you find out if someone's a narcissist? The article that popped up was called, you only need a one test question to identify a narcissist. And I was like, oh, this is it. Cause you know, everything is gonna pop up on Google, all these little quizzes, I, nah, I, I. what's the quickest way to find out if someone's a narcissist or not? And so this came up and I clicked on it like lightning speed. 
And so in the article, the first thing she says is to find a narcissist, just ask them to stand up tall. She says, according to a new study based on 11 separate experiments, the 40 question diagnostic test for narcissism can often be skipped in favor of one single blunt question. Are you a narcissist? That's all you need to ask the person. If you suspect or if you feel or are you a narcissist? It says together the 11 experiments show that individuals who scored high on the old evaluation were very likely to respond in the affirmative. It's pretty cool actually because narcissists aren't afraid to tell you that they're narcissistic. All you have to do is ask them that it's a condition. It's a disorder. They're so after this idealized image of themselves that if you ask them straight up, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think I'm this or I think I'm that or yeah. So here's the backstory. I matched with this girl on Facebook dating a couple months ago. Initially, I almost swiped left. And here's why. She lives in Florida. I'm like, I'm never... I'm never gonna see this person. But I was like, you know, F it. Let me just see what happens. Maybe maybe she moves to New Orleans or maybe she hangs out in New Orleans frequently, which is why she's popping up in my Rolodex of options. I'd been looking for friends to make here, to hang out, to do things with. We matched. We started, you know, messaging each other through the app and she seemed cool. Eventually we exchanged numbers and we're, we were texting all the time. Turns out she only lives about three and a half hours away from me, which is not that bad. But I'm like, I don't expect anything from this. You know what I mean? Like, how? Somewhere along the line, we sort of like each other. Let's get these questions out of the way, right? I'm probably gonna make a separate video for this. Have I ever been in a relationship with a girl? No. Have I ever dated a girl? No. Instant connection. And she was a Sagittarius, right? I'm a Leo, fellow, fellow fire sign. I always attract Sagittariuses, always. The problem with that though, is there's a cap. Things will start off fantastic. It's an amazing ride, but it always ends. And it doesn't end like quietly and calmly. It's always this like explosion of emotions and it gets nasty. It doesn't get super nasty, but it gets nasty. And so when she told me she was a Sagittarius, I'm like, oh, okay. My ex best friend is, was a Sagittarius. My mother was a Sagittarius. I've had these experiences with them over and over time and time again. Ultimately, I ended up going to visit her and then she came to visit me. And so when she came to visit me, backtrack. And between that time, there had been a red flag. She had lied about her age like two times. She had lied about other little things. She had done a lot of things to try to make me jealous um, of her past relationships or whatever the case may be. And I'm not that type of individual. I'm not saying that I don't get jealous, because I do. I'm not that type of individual that's gonna give you a reaction every time you want a reaction. For what? Like. I know my worth. At one point I told her that I'm not about to be out here giving you a reaction every time you tell me something or try to get me riled up or try to, I'm just not gonna do that. And to her, I was just super nonchalant. Like, you're just so nonchalant and like, I can't ever tell how you feel or I just, I don't, you know, I'm used to being in relationships or dealing with women that are like over the top and like always ready to, you know, go at it and can be very toxic. And so that also was a red flag in itself. Like you telling me that you're accustomed to toxic ass relationships I, I'm not with that. I'm not with that. I don't know nothing about that. With me, you always get three chances. And not three chances like I'm just gonna keep giving you the benefit of the doubt, but you get three chances in terms of like, all right, I'm keeping note of all the stupid shit you do or the things that you do or say that rub me the wrong way and that you can't like, we can't have a conversation about, we can't work through, or you don't wanna admit to or fess up to or take responsibility for or accountability for. Cause I'm gonna take accountability and responsibility for the shit that I do. I'm always trying to look at a situation from someone else's perspective. It's never just for mine. I'm always like, well, okay, what did I do? What did I say? How could I have done this differently? Okay, I see how they could how they could take it that way. Oh, I understand. Okay, well, let me apologize for this. That's always me. And with Sagittarius's specifically, I'm always the first one to apologize. I'm always the first one to reach out. If I don't say anything to a Sagittarius when we have a disagreement and we stop, we may stop talking, they're not gonna say any, anything to me. And I've seen them have that same type of behavior, not just with me, but with other people, with the other people in their lives. It's kind of like this victim, victimized or victim role that they have going on, where it's like everything is everyone else's fault but theirs. So I'm not saying that Sagittarius are prone to narcissism, but, ciao. Anyway, um, <laughs> That's been my experience, right? For her, the third strike was when she came to visit me. She lied, 
yet again about something stupid something trivial to try to get a reaction out of me or maybe she told the truth but she tried to cover it up and say it was a lie it, it just it was too much it was too confusing for me and at that point i was like yeah i'm done and so i said i think we should just be friends why did i say that in the moment it was like okay sad and i understood that you know of course you're gonna be sad if you like someone or you want to be with someone and all of a sudden they're telling you let's just be friends right i completely understand that i would feel the same way we'll get into this list now of ways to spot a narcissist or ways to tell if you're dating or dealing with a narcissist this list also comes from an article it's written by gabrielle castle and it was updated january 30th 2019. number one they were charming at first the article says it started out as a fairy tale maybe they texted you constantly told you they loved you within the first month um and that's referred to as love bombing i think we've all heard of love bombing at this point because it's been all over social media love bombing is the process of overwhelming someone with signs of adoration and attraction compliments gifts um all of these things that are designed to manipulate you into spending more time with them and not with other people in your life right that's what love bombing is so we got that in my situation i was love bombed and i didn't pick up on the fact that i was love bombed literally until weeks into it a huge thing with narcissists is attention they want they crave that attention like nobody's business like everybody wants attention but not the way that a narcissist wants attention very early on she's like oh you're perfect you're so beautiful you're so perfect um i love you i love you i love you we barely know each other and i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna hold you i fell for it i definitely fell for it right but I, in the back of my mind i'm like yo what like this is this is very early narcissists think that they deserve to be with other people who are special because they believe that they're special they believe that they're superior to anybody else right they think that the only person that can appreciate them is someone else who's just as special as they are but as soon as you do something that disappoints them they could turn on you the number two sign that you may be dealing with a narcissist. They hog the convo to talk about how great they are. Narcissists love to constantly talk about their own accomplishments and achievements with grandiose. They're also so busy talking about themselves that they don't really listen to you. And even if you do tell them something about yourself, they're not really engaging with what you told them about yourself. Now, I experienced that too. She didn't really brag about herself all the time, but we would be on the phone for hours and not really talk about anything. And I would, I would get off the phone sometimes or I would get off of FaceTime and I'm like, we didn't talk about anything. A lot of the time she wanted to be on the phone from, from sun up to freaking sundown. Like she wanted my undivided attention all day long. I really don't like talking on the phone. I'm a FaceTime person. But if I'm on the phone with you, we're gonna have a conversation. We're gonna be talking about something. And I like deep conversations. I like conversations about anything and everything. The number three sign that you might be dealing with a narcissist. They feed off of your compliments, right? Narcissists may seem like they're super self-confident, but according to the doctor, most people with narcissistic personality disorder lack self-esteem. The number four sign you might be dealing with a narcissist, they lack empathy. Lack of empathy or the ability to feel how another person is feeling is one of the hallmark characteristics of a narcissist. Basically, they don't do emotions that belong to other people. They don't care how you feel. And what I think is also interesting about that is that they can very well pretend like they care how you feel. To be able to manipulate you, they have to pretend that they care about what you feel. I don't really have a specific example from my experience with that, but I think overall, right, you have to act like you care about somebody's feelings or you care about what they think or what they're doing to, to, to ensure that they stick around. Right? That's just common sense, I guess. The number five sign that you might be dealing with a narcissist, they don't have any or many long-term friends. Dig deeper into the connections and you may notice that they only have casual acquaintances, buddies, that they trash talk, and nemesis. As a result, they might lash out at you when you want to hang with your close friends or your best friend. They might claim that you don't spend enough time with them or whatever the case may be. And so... I had that experience if i was texting and hadn't responded to her if i was texting somebody else or if i just hadn't responded to her the assumption always became oh who are you talking to who are you texting who is that and it's like girl i know other people outside of you i knew people before you you mad you want to argue <laughs> i'm not arguing with you <laughs> like what 
I'm just like, why is she so jealous? This is weird. Don't you have friends? She told me she didn't really have many close friends. She had one really like a best friend, right? And she had all these other like people that she knew, all these acquaintances, basically. All these people that she was cool with, but like not, not close, close to. Um, so there's that. The number six sign that you might be dating or dealing with a narcissist. They pick on you constantly. In the beginning, it may come off as a joke or as just teasing or whatever the case may be, playing around. They'll put you down, call you names, hit you with hurtful one-liners and make jokes that aren't quite funny. Their goal is to lower one's self-esteem so that they can increase their own because it makes them feel powerful. My example with my situation is she would always tell me, you're so basic. She always had her face done. She always put on makeup. If you wanna put on makeup all day, every day, cool, do your thing. I can't do it because I don't really know how to do makeup, <laughs> as you guys can see. Um, I'ma just keep it 100 with you, that's what it is. If I knew how to do it, sure, absolutely, but I don't, and I don't really care to learn too much, you know what I mean? For her, she looked at me and was just like, oh, you're just so basic. And in the beginning, it was just playful, teasing. And when she came to visit me, it became like, you're so fucking basic. 